OntarioLoval.com here at the Canadian Motorsport Expo, standing here with none other than Randy LaJoy, who's here with his own company. And uh, you were up last night for a little fan forum, and uh, is this your first trip to Canada, or have you been here before? Well, here at the Canadian Expo, this is my first trip. Uh, raced up here a lot back in the mid-80s uh, with the old NASCAR North Tour. Uh, won a race out here at Cayuga. Won a race in uh, Saint Air, Montreal. There's a few racetracks we did race on up here. I didn't win on all of them, but uh, it's just uh, I come up here and, and did some ESPN stuff or when I did the Montreal races. Uh, it's just uh, I, and they've been after me to come to the show, and uh, I thought it was a good timing now that the Canadian Tire Series here has gone to a, a certified seat. Uh, so I'm going to try to get some customers here and keep some guys safe. Yeah, you've really moved into uh, your your business full time with that, and done so many great improvements in the in the seat industry. Talk a little bit about how that got started and how you got your business rolling to where it is now. Uh, you know, it was a, a seat that my dad bought in the early '70s from Mark Donahue. Uh, so when I started racing in the late '70s, uh, you know, that's what I used was this form fitted uh, seat, and it really held me by my shoulders, and it fit my lower butt and. Uh, the, the more racing I did, the better I got, the more people would call and come drive their cars, and they didn't have what I had as a seat. Everybody had a conventional square, hold you in by your ribbed seat, and I thought it was very uncomfortable. I was black and blue, uh, made me very sore, and, and I couldn't, I was a better race car driver not having to hold myself into a car. Uh, so with my shoulder held seat, I was a whole lot better of a race car driver. In 1994, NASCAR says we can't have fiberglass anymore. Uh, so I, I went to all of the aluminum seat manufacturers, and, and none of them wanted to build that style seat. They said it was too hard, uh, which uh, it's a lot better than theirs, and that's why it was hard. So uh, I really wanted to stay in that seat. Uh, met somebody, through somebody, finally met a guy in Dayton, Ohio that could get the seat stamped, uh, which is a very expensive process. And I said, well, if I'm going to do this, obviously I'm going to have to go into business. So 1997, uh, the joy of seating was born, and we are, here we are today, and we, we have a different mousetrap than everybody else's. It's a, it's a fits you better. It's a lot stronger. It's a lot lighter. It's just a little bit different than everybody else's. And it seems like the product that you've created is, is known because of that, because there seems to be a real buzz around your product compared to some of the others in the market, and you have to be proud of that. I, I am. I mean, uh, and I'm kind of glad. Uh, uh, like I said, I think it was 1973, my dad bought this seat from Mark Donahue. Uh, and I'm really glad that Mark Donahue was a, a smart engineer race car driver, uh, and it, it's worked very well. It just tells me that you know he was 25 years ahead of his time when it came to holding a driver in their car. Uh, I mean, it's taken these other companies, probably, I mean, it was about 10 years ago, they started adding on shoulder braces and head supports. I don't know why, you know, being in that industry, they didn't care about the drivers or they didn't listen to them. So being, it was one of the things that I do is I'm so much more custom than everybody else is I do listen to the drivers. You know, I was that crash test dummy that hit stuff uh, and it hurt. Uh, so once I started building my seats a lot stronger, when I moved less, I felt a lot better. So the honeydew list got done on, on Sundays and I could play golf on Mondays. Otherwise I was all tore up and I couldn't walk or I was bent over and, and it's great to hear competitors, they say, Randy, my back always hurt me until I bought one of your seats. Now my back doesn't hurt me no more. As well, because you fit and you don't move. Exactly. Now, uh, going back to your racing days, and to me personally, I was a big fan of the Bush series and where it was back then. Today, it, it's really changed. And I'd like to hear your perspective on where the Nationwide series is now compared to back to what I like to think is the golden years of the Bush series. It, it definitely was the golden years. You had got a lot of guys, you had 20 guys that made that their home and, and didn't want to go anywhere else. Uh, well, now with the limited amount of owners that are out there, uh, yeah, it seems like we have you know a handful of eight owners that have four cars in every division that's out there, uh, and it's really not that good for the sport. Uh, one of the reasons I'm not doing ESPN anymore is, is uh, I voiced my opinion about the Nationwide Series, and they didn't like it. Uh, but I don't know how they're going to fix it. Uh, 
until they separate the racetracks again and not make it as easy for the guys to jump into a nationwide car instead of sitting in their motorhome. You know, that, that was one of the advantages of the old Bush Series was, you know, 80% of our races were, were separate from, from the Cup Series. And I, and I don't think that's a bad thing. I mean, uh, that's the one thing I see now with this K&N Series, uh, the Canadian Tire Series. You know, we're, we're, these series are totally separate. And, and I don't know, between the trucks and the Nationwide, I see one of them going away here in a few years. Now, uh, you as a driver, do you have any plans down the road to drive some more, or are you just focused on your business? Well, you know, if you're not 20 and pretty, yeah, you can't drive NASCAR. And my mirror tells me I'm neither one. Uh, but I do have a 20-year-old, and he's a darn good-looking kid. Uh, and I have a 17-year-old. So, you know, I've been there. I've done it. I accomplished a lot. I accomplished more than a lot of people. Uh, so now I'm going to help the kids and, and try to keep you know the racing community is safe. I, I have a nonprofit called the Safer Racer Tour. Uh, I visit about 30 racetracks a year because the, the lower divisions don't know about the newer safety systems that are out there. Whether it's a containment seat, whether it's a good head and neck restraint, whether it's a belt system. Uh, you know that's something that you know NASCAR has did a very good job since we lost Earnhardt educating the top three divisions. But that's it. And there's a lot of Saturday night, Friday night racers out there that don't know that you can get hurt doing this. This is still a dangerous sport, and, and they don't think they're going fast, but a 50-mile-an-hour crash, you get hurt just as bad as a 150-mile-an-hour crash. Now, uh, we have a lot of short track racers that, to visit our website and watch our uh, videos here. For any of them that didn't make it here to the Expo and, and they're interested in your seat, what's the best way to get a hold of you and uh, what kind of information do you need from them to get them into one of your seats? Right, everything's on our website. It's called thejoyofseating.com. Uh, J-O-I-E. Uh, it comes a... Uh, uh, at the end of the day, my name, La Joie, is Canadian. I still have uh, Montreal folks and St. Johnsbury folks, a uh, family that's still up here. So I guess I'm a bit Canadian, and uh, maybe I should try getting my son on a diversity program, because saying he's a Canadian, but because uh, uh, some of these guys that are in a diversity program are about as diverse as I am. Uh, so uh, yeah, I have a great website. Uh, they get a hold of us. They can look at the website. They can see how they can measure themselves, uh, whatever application they need. If they're sitting in any aluminum seat right now, I have a better one. There you go. That's Randy LaJoy here at the Canadian Motorsport Expo. I'm Greg Kellen for OntarioOval.com.